It's time for Top That Trade, starring our favorites, Alan Nuckman, the Chief Market Strategist at St. Paul Research, and Phil Flynn, a Fox Business Network News contributor. Let's get our trader game going now with round number one. China, China, China. Is the unkind unwind in the Chinese stocks a market worry or an opportunity? Well, our stocks in America are hot and theirs are not. So I always look at markets that are bad enough to buy. I like the fact that I think capitalism is going to rear its head here and they're going to realize they need their equities markets to perform. If you look at FXI, which is the ETF that tracks the big caps in China, the big boys, it's been sideways for more than a decade now, between 35 and 55. When it broke below 45, that's when you saw this ugliness. So let's see if it can come back to that breakup point. Ten years, this uh, China ETF has been unchanged. I'm looking at this as an opportunity. I think it could be an opportunity, and I think Alan's absolutely right, even though we have some concerns about the Chinese regulatory crackdown. And I think Alan's right, because, you know, the reason why China had this meteoric growth over the last, you know, 20, 30 years has been because they moved more towards capitalistic uh, uh, ideals. And when every time they pull a Away from that, they see the, the market, their stock market, take some pain. There are some good opportunities in the Chinese stock market. I mean, we're, we're still concerned, though, on a lot of these markets because they do have, you know, some issues from a regulatory standpoint that makes it more risky than being in an established market in the U.S. And we still don't like the fact that they still use slave labor. That's hard to compete with. Yeah, but it's a it's a it's a hot stove, and they've learned their lesson. I think you you touch a hot stove more than once, you usually catch you know get the idea. It took me a couple times, but I did get that. It took a while. So, <laughs> round number two, nation of reflation. We've talked about the commodity climb, but what about some of the products that are now less expensive than before 2020? What's getting your attention as an investor? I think clothes is one. Nobody buys clothes anymore, right? You don't have to go to work. Everybody is in sweats and T-shirts and things like that, except for me. I dress like this every day when I'm home seven days a week. I always put the tie on and the suit. Uh, but, you know, clothes prices have gone down dramatically. So there's some really good opportunities. I think if we do reopen and start to go back to the office, that's going to be a big sector. In fact, there was a study that did that most Clothes sizes have gone up two sizes in the last year because people have put on weight at home. So actually, as we reopen the economy, you should look at those closing manufacturers as opportunities because you're going to see some growth. First off, I want to point out that I think Phil wears a suit to sleep, but I don't know if we wear his pants. So he was only talking about shirts. He wasn't talking about pants. We'll see. Uh, what, what I like drugs are cheaper. I mean, pharmaceuticals, not drugs. Drugs are cheaper. They're down 3%. Medical supplies are down 6%. The company I like is Teva. Teva had some bullish divergence here. It made new lows, uh, but it did not make new highs of volatility. It's had a bounce, a move above 10 and a half, and it could test 13 once again. So I think, again, drug prices are cheaper, and uh, Teva is my play. Round number three, best of tech. What's the better buy? Will it be Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Facebook, or Apple? All of them. All of them. The NASDAQ. Now, what should be uh, you know, getting our attention is the fact that they all had great, amazing, killer, uh, you know, ex exorbitant earnings. I think tech is, is still a great investment. And out of those, the ones that would have the least uh, concern about inflation is probably going to be the one I'm going to pick. And I'm going to have to say Microsoft, because some of them do have some impact from inflation. Here's your bonus round question for today. True or false, an incoming Tennessee State University basketball player has signed a $2 million endorsement deal with a tech company. The answer is unfortunate for the sporting world, fortunate for him, but the answer is yes. I didn't hear the question, and I've got a 50-50 chance to get it right, so I'm just going to say true, and uh, I'm going to go with that. It is absolutely true, according to Knox News. Hey, hey, Vincent, who needs to hear the question? I don't need that. I can still get it right. I'm amazing. Oh, you guys are good. Business First AM continues right after this. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.